Hey everybody, Jack Lispini here with one last video for 2019, and today I'm doing something a little fun. I've got this giant 54 millimeter scale Space Marine that I have 3D printed on my brand new Anycubic Photon S. Here's a normal Primaris Marine for a scale. Found this file on the internet, I want to say like three years ago. And it's just been sitting in my computer because it needed a ton of work to get ready to actually 3D print. Well, I finally did it. I got everything ready to 3D print, fixed it up, created some new shapes, did the embossing and all that. And I'm ready to put some paint on it. So let's get to it. I'm going to start off with some Pro Acryl Dark Blue in the airbrush with some Flow Improver. And I'm going to spray on a pretty good base coat. I'm leaving a little bit of the black primer showing through in the deepest recesses and shadows just so that we can have some pretty high contrast on this model. I want it to be really cool and really striking when it's sitting up on my shelf. After that, I'm going to pull out some pants blue, get that mixed up in the airbrush and start off with a pretty high angle spray. I'm going to be feathering that out onto the limbs and the tops of the model where the light is going to reflect the most, leaving most of that dark blue feathered out into the deepest shadows, starting up the sort of middle part of our high contrast ultramarine blue workup. Some of you might have noticed this is some different blue paint than what I normally use for my signature ultramarine workup. And that's just because I wanted to try something different. This guy is obviously not going to be a part of my ultramarines army on the tabletop, so I can afford to play around with some different blues because I don't need to color match my existing collection. Last color is gonna be some sky blue. I'm gonna put that in the airbrush with a pretty liberal amount of flow improver, so these pop highlights can be really, really smooth, no speckling and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just going to focus the brightest part of the models, utilizing the same techniques that I talk about in a lot of my Space Marine videos, where I focus the tops of the head, shoulder pads, backpack, and then draw center lines down the limbs, like the arms and legs, making sure to get some pop highlights on places like the knee pads and elbow pads and tip of his feet. Once that's good and dry, I'm going to pull out some dark silver. This is a great dark gunmetal color. And I'm going to cut in all of the parts on the model that I want to be a steel metallic. Just doing mostly the bolter right here. You get the idea. I'm just going to be doing all of those other pieces before our next step. Next, I'm gonna pull out some rich gold. This is a great, really shiny yellow gold. And I'm going to cut in anything that I wanna be a gold detail, like the chest eagle and that one ultra marine symbol on his knee pad. I'm just gonna make that gold so that not all of the symbols on him are white, just some you know different colors for flair. Rich Gold is a pretty good gold paint. I'm beginning to get more comfortable with the Pro Acryl Metallics. So while I would normally use my Scale 75 Golds, uh, I did want to try these out and try to get some more time with them so I can get more comfortable because they are really high quality paints. And I'm beginning to really like them. 
Next, I'm going to pull out some coal black, and we're going to black out anything that we want to be a dark black color. So I'm going to do the bolt gun casing body, whatever you want to call it, the furniture. I'm going to do that in a nice flat black, and I'm also going to cut in the ammo pouches on his belt and any other little black details. If you didn't know, my favorite Ultramarines are the 4th Company. My entire collection of Ultramarines is 4th Company, so I'm going to make this guy 4th Company. I'm taking some Camo Green and some Soylent Green, and I'm going to mix those 50-50 to get a darker green base coat. Um, I prefer to go more towards a brighter green, almost up to a yellow green at the very end for my 4th Company, rather than a more uh, like foresty, organic green. So I'm just going to base coat in those trim pieces, making sure not to smear any on the shoulder pad field of blue. Don't want to have to clean up any of that airbrushing if we can avoid it. Once that's dry, I'm going to go over that base coat with straight Soylent Green to get the main color of our trim pieces. And I'm trying to leave a little bit of that bevel on the top of the shoulder pad with some of that darker green showing through, uh, just so we can have the detail look a little bit more popped out on the model. Having the darker bevels creates that nice little shadowed effect that I like. With that cut in, I'm going to pull out some dark, warm gray, and we're going to base coat in our other details, like this tactical arrow and our big Ultima symbol on his shoulder pad. And I also switched to a slightly smaller brush to cut in the detail on the embossed Ultima symbol on his backpack and the very lightly embossed Roman numeral 4 on his shoulder pad. And to highlight that, I'm going to pull out some light neutral gray, and we're going to base coat this in on the face of these embossed symbols, leaving the bevels that darker neutral gray. And again, this is going to create that kind of drop shadow effect on these embossed shapes to make them pop out more on the model and give us a really nice shadowed effect. With all those colors blocked in, I did need to go in and do a little bit of black lining around the details. Some of the details are a little shallow, so I decided to put some black lining in there in areas where I wanted to make sure there was a nice hard black line of shade because I did not think our wash would settle in those areas. Speaking of washes, it's time to put one on this guy. I'm pulling out the Mr. Hobby weathering oil wash system. We've got our solvent here, and uh, if you haven't seen me use this before, solvent's a bit of a misnomer. It's more of like just a diluter for this oil wash. And so I'm going to dilute a little bit of the wash in our solvent and paint that all over the model, basically getting him lubed up so that when I put the very, very thick, aggressive oil wash on there, it helps it flow around and not instantly dry and stick to the model because we are going to have to go back and kind of blend this and wick it away and dilute it a little bit more to get that nice clean blended oil wash look. Throughout this process, I'm just constantly 
cleaning up parts of the model, then dipping my brush back into that solvent to kind of clean it out and then using it as a uh, tool to blend that oil wash into the recesses and clean off all of the brighter areas so that our shadows are darker and our highlights stay clean and we get that really even oil wash blended look on the model. To start our highlights, I'm going to bring in some very thin down soylent green and do some glazing type highlights on our shoulder pad trim to brighten up certain areas and also clean up the trim pieces a little bit because there is a bit of a darker color filter on the model, even in the clean areas from the oil wash. After that, I'm gonna do the same thing on our symbols. Just some of that light neutral gray, very thinned out into a glaze highlight and do a couple of coats of very, very thin glazing on those symbols to clean them up and also brighten them up a little bit, giving us more contrast on the model. To highlight up our bolter and other black parts on the model, I got some dark neutral gray. I'm gonna thin that out into a glaze. This is a very dark kind of charcoal-y type gray, so it's gonna be pretty subtle as the first highlight on our uh, black details there. And that's kind of what I want. I don't want a super sharp uh, highlight on top of this, this black stuff. I want to have a more even distribution of color highlights. So that's why I always start with this really, really dark gray that's super subtle, and then go up to a more mid-tone gray for our edge highlights. And as you can see here, I'm coming in with that lighter neutral gray and doing our edge highlights, just using the side of my brush with very little paint in there so I can kind of scrape the side of the brush over those hard edges. Sometimes I will have to draw some lines just to kind of straighten those out, but uh, that's the trick. If you have trouble drawing straight lines for your edge highlights, just try to use the side of the brush and you can just scrape it along those hard edges and create nice clean lines. Next, I'm gonna do a little bit of paint scratch type weathering, taking that dark neutral gray, which is gonna be exceptionally dark over our lighter blues. And I'm just gonna cut in some little uh, scratches in his armor. And after that, I'm going to come in and start doing our edge highlighting. And when I do these little scratches, I like to use the same edge highlighting color to highlight the scratches. So it looks like a fresh scratch in the armor that's the, uh, the same color and helps it pop out. And when you're doing your scratches, make sure to highlight the bottom edge of your scratches where possible. Or, you know, if it's at a weird angle, try to approximate where the bottom of that is. It helps it look a little bit more realistic. You don't want these on the top because it, it kind of messes with the eye. It doesn't really look right. So always do the bottom of your scratches. And I'm also going to use this same blue to do our edge highlighting. And as a general rule of thumb, the bigger the model is, the less edge highlighting you actually need. So I'm not gonna be doing every single little edge on this model like I would an old style 28 millimeter Space Marine. 
I'm gonna do a little bit less, only like big areas where I think light's gonna catch the most. And for our shoulder pad trim, I'm gonna pull out some bright yellow green to do our edge highlighting. And this is really easy. I've been doing it this way for your Space Marines for years. Just use the edge of your brush, catch those outside edges. Uh, this guy's a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna do some of the inside edges just because, you know, it's like a blown up scale of Space Marine. I, it's not nearly as difficult to do it on something this big. But yeah, again, if you're having trouble with edge highlights, just use the side of your brush and scrape it along and uh, as long as you don't have too much paint in there, get nice clean lines. I'm gonna grab our bold titanium white, and do some quick edge highlights around the top edges of our symbols on his shoulder pad and the uh, smaller symbols on his shoulder pad and backpack. And the last step is to protect everything with a coat of varnish. I really like this Lucky Varnish from Ammo by MIG as sort of a finishing varnish, whereas I use a, a bigger bottle of varnish for sort of in-between coats. But I really like the ultra matte finish that this Lucky Varnish gives us. It's airbrush ready, so I just put a little bit in there, give it a few quick sprays all over, let it dry, and it comes out really, really nice. So here he is, he's totally done. I had so much fun painting this. This is uh, the last project of 2019. I'm really looking forward to my end of the year vacation. And I wanted to do something just for fun, you know? So even though uh, this isn't a tabletop scale miniature, you can use a lot of these techniques on your models in your armies. And uh, I guess I'll see you in 2020. Hope you guys enjoyed this last tutorial. I'll see you next time.